Alrighty guys, welcome to part 3 of our 7 inch buoy build. We finished the last video out with getting the guard and front spacer fit onto our knife. In this video we'll be working on the rest of the handle. Oleg from KnifeWood.com contacted me during the last YouTuber's knife making challenge and offered to send me some wood blocks. I'm sure glad I accepted because these blocks look awesome. So major thanks to Oleg and if y'all are interested in getting some exotic stabilized wood, check them out. For this project, I selected some birch that had been stabilized and dyed a greenish blue color. I start the fitting process by using a long shanked 3 16th of an inch end mill to create a slot all the way through the block. With my DIY handle brooch, I squared off the slot so it better accepts my tank. I went back and forth a few times to get this fit just right. I'll be betting this handle later in the video, but I still want the fit to be snug. Applying some Sharpie to the tang will give you an idea of where material needs to be removed from the slot. I realized I still had too much length at this point, so I cut off the excess and squared it up on the disc grinder. Before we can go any further with this block, I need to put some threads into my tang. I'll be threading this tang to a 1032 thread, which requires a shank of around 3 16 of an inch. This is a fairly painless process on the belt grinder, and the diameter doesn't need to be perfect here. Remember I already had softened this tang in the first part of this build series. To match our guard, I'm going to be making the pommel nut out of copper. The only piece of copper I had was only 5 16 of an inch in diameter, which is cutting it close for my target dimensions, but I decided to give it a go anyways. I chucked it up in my new little machine shop 3 jaw chuck and got to work drilling and tapping it to a 1032 female thread. I then took down the OD of the shaft to less than a quarter of an inch with a step around 20 thousandths of an inch in diameter larger than that. All in all, the wall thickness ended up being pretty thin on this nut, which ended up biting me later in the build. In tandem with the pommel nut, it makes sense to work on the fabrication of the pommel itself. I'm using a chuck of stainless steel for this pommel. I drilled a hole through it slightly larger than the shaft of the pommel nut, and then drilled a step to accept the shoulder of the nut. Back on the lathe, I flipped around the pommel nut and cleaned up the head. At this point, I decided to machine in a point to the end of the pommel nut and then drilled a 332nd of an inch cross hole into the nut so that I can take this handle apart easily. On the back of the handle block, I used an end mill in order to open up a hole large enough to accept the pommel nut shaft. At this point, everything fits together pretty well and I can move on to drilling the holes for my locator pins. I mark these pin locations around the hundred thousandths of an inch away from the sides of my slot and drilled them to 1 16th of an inch. For the front spacer, we can drill all the way through with these 1 16th of an inch holes. Once we have the holes drilled in the front spacer, I put the knife back together, then use super glue to affix the front spacer to the wood handle block. The front spacer will then be used as a drill guide. I'm drilling the holes about 3 fourths of an inch into the wood so that I don't have to modify my 1 inch hardened dowel pins. The DRO on my mini mill really helps make this task easy. To get the locator pins in the back of the handle, we need to insert a whole template into the stack up. This is necessary since we can't drill all the way through the pommel. The same process of gluing and drilling is repeated twice here, with the end result being 1 16th of an inch dowel pins locating in the wood block to the pommel. Note I only drilled about 70 thousandths of an inch into the pommel itself. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying the build, which we'll get back to in a moment, but I wanted to put a plug in here for my side channel, Redbeard Engineer. It's been extremely hot in my garage this summer, so I decided to try to get a leg up on Mother Nature by installing the mini split system that you see behind me here. I will be putting the full install video on Redbeard Engineer, and I'll put a link to it in the first comment down below. I find myself working on a bunch of projects that don't really fit into the general scope of Redbeard Ops, so those will be housed on Redbeard Engineer. As always, I thank y'all greatly for your viewership, and let's get back to the build. It's at this point in the build that I'm going to attempt to bed the handle. This is the first handle I've ever bedded, so I decided to work up a test batch of my epoxy to see how fast it will cure. I'm going to be using some 5 minute epoxy for this bedding, so I won't be able to make any mistakes. With the heat of my shop, this stuff is setting up in about 4 minutes. I coated the entire tang and all the fittings with petroleum jelly, so that the epoxy does not stick to them. As a side note, on the next build, I'll likely wrap some of the components with Teflon tape to help reduce stickage. 
I quickly got the epoxy mixed up and poured into my tape capped handle, then inserted my tang allowing the squeeze out to fall into a trash can. I got a little bold here and waited about 7 minutes before trying to remove this handle, which proved to be a mistake but was also a blessing in disguise. When attempting to disassemble my handle, the thin walled copper pommel nut twisted off. This along with the quick set time of the epoxy forced me to use a punch to gently drive the tang out of the handle block. While this process didn't go according to plan, all was not lost. Here are my thoughts from the heat of battle. All right, so at this point, I do have a bedded handle. However, I broke my pommel nut. Now, the pommel nut had a shank diameter of a little less than a quarter of an inch, which just so happens to be too small, I guess, for 1032 threads. Not to mention, it was also copper, which is a little weaker than, say, a stainless. I may have been able to get away with that kind of construction with stainless. So with all that being said, I'm gonna take this pommel nut, I'm going to enlarge the size of this hole, and then I think I'm gonna to go to some bronze here and make a larger pommel nut. I'm also going to probably use this bronze bar here, taken down in thickness, to make a new guard, since this guard does have a little bit of gapping towards the top of the guard fit, and it's also copper, and I'm gonna have a bronze pommel nut, so I think that would look kinda of weird. So yeah, I'm pretty much gonna redo a bunch of the work I just did. So like I said, this was for sure a setback, however there were silver linings. The handle did get bedded to the tang nicely, and I was forced to go a different direction which ended up being a net positive for the project. The larger piece of bronze made constructing my pommel nut easier, and the final product was surely more robust than the small copper counterpart. I also decided to go with a more rounded pommel nut design since I really didn't care for the pointy geometry of the copper nut. To accept my larger pommel nut, I had to increase the diameter of the hole in the pommel to 5 16 of an inch with an end mill. The bronze bar stock I have is a little thick for this application, so I took it down to around 190 thousandths of an inch. I then milled the slot in it with a 3 16 of an inch end mill. Using the high-speed carbide burr and my cheapo digital microscope, I repeated the process of the guard fitting. Once again, I can't say this guard fit is perfect, but it's better than the last three attempts with this knife. After reflecting on the build, I've come to the conclusion that the issue lies in the slot itself. I think for all four guards, I actually enlarged the slot too tall with my files. This allowed a slight bit of movement in the up and down direction perpendicular to the edge, which after a few cycles of hammering on the guard results in little gaps at the top and bottom of my ricasso. Add on to the other aforementioned issues with the dimensions of my shoulder, back cutting, and the softened ricasso, and you get the slight imperfections that I'm seeing here. That being said, I think things are looking good enough to continue on with the build. In the next and final part of our build series, I'll be shaping up all the handle components and putting the final touches on the knife. If you're still with me, I'm really hoping y'all are enjoying the series thus far. I'm obviously still learning here, and I'm happy to share the journey with all of you. I have to also thank Kyle Royer and his family again for putting together such a great takedown buoy course, as well as all the pommel nuts and Royer's private Facebook group for their tips and tricks. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.